Hello, my name is Dr. Samuel Gipp. Uh, I've come to you today in this scene because I want to address somebody who probably feel more at home here. Uh, I want to talk to you today about a, a, a little boy that has a church, claims to have a church in uh, Arizona, Phoenix. His name is Stephen L. Anderson. And uh, young Anderson uh, fancies himself as a Bible scholar. He's not even a, much of a pastor, let alone a Bible scholar. Uh, he puts out some internet videos, and if it wasn't for those, he wouldn't be affecting any, anybody. Claims to have a church of 250, if you ever look at his videos, only about one-tenth of those ever get to his church. But here's the thing. Uh, Anderson's gone all over the internet trying to say that I deny that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He shows 20, 20 seconds of a, of a video of a sermon to do that, uh, and then has to lie. Now, here's what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, verse 1, it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, uh, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. And that's what uh, Anderson does. He's crafty. Uh, he's deceitful. Uh, in fact, he doesn't even run the show. Uh, the real guy behind it is a fellow by the name of Paul Wittenberger. And Wittenberger kind of pulls the strings on Anderson. Anderson needs an adult desperately. Uh, to keep him in line. And the reason I call him a 12-year-old is because I, I, um, I coaxed him to call me one day. He believes that the church is going halfway through the tribulation. To be very honest with you, it wouldn't bother me at all if Anderson went halfway through the tribulation. And I, I called a, a pastor friend of his in California, and I wanted to get to Anderson, and so I, I asked this fellow some questions. I knew as soon as I got done uh, talking to him that he would call his boss, Stephen Anderson. So, I called this guy a second time. And when I hung up, uh, I, I looked at my watch and I said, Stephen Anderson will call me within the next 20 minutes. 15 minutes later, my phone rang and it was Stephen Anderson. And I asked him, I said, uh, you believe we're going halfway through the tribulation? He said, yes. And I said, now, did you get that from uh, Rosenthal in California? And he was very almost upset that he would have gotten anybody taught him anything. He said, no. I said, well, did you get that from Rasmussen? No. He said, when I was 12 years old, I read Matthew 24, and I saw that. Now, guys, think back to when you were 12 years old. What did you believe then that you had to get straightened out on? And believe it or not, I'm not just saying this. This, this guy is locked in 12 years old. He got his Bible wrong when he was 12 on, the, on going through the tribulation and has been wrong ever since. And if you keep that in mind and look at his videos, then you understand he's still a 12-year-old. If you look at his church services... He throws tantrums. I don't mean a Bible-thumping preacher. There are guys that thump the Bible and yell when they preach. No, no, this guy throws tantrums when he preaches. I've seen him where he kicks the pulpit like a 12-year-old like a throwing a tantrum, where he takes the Bible like he would take a toy. This may be Stephen Anderson's toy, but he takes the Bible and throws it. Uh, I don't, that's no respect for the Bible. He has an entire service where he had to tell the men in his church the proper way to go to the bathroom. Now, if I'm talking to a pastor, is there a pastor listening to me? You really think there is a need for you to explain to your men how to go to the bathroom? No man would think that. A 12-year-old, yes, a 12-year-old would think that. He cusses in his pulpit. And here's what he believes. He put out this recent video where he, he has uh, 20 seconds of a sermon. Now, guys, I've been preaching for 45 years. If you put every sermon I've ever preached end to end, do you know how many years of time that would be? And this guy gets 20 seconds where I said that Jesus was not the Messiah sent to the Gentiles. You read your Bible, you can't find any place in the Old Testament where God said to a Gentile, I'm going to send you the Messiah. He says in Isaiah 42 that the Gentiles, he bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. There's other places where he said, uh, he would bless the Gentiles through Israel, and the Gentiles have been all around the world. The Gentiles have been blessed through Israel. But here's why he's upset. It has nothing to do with what I believe about the Messiah. Let me tell you what I believe about the Messiah. Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Um, the Messiah was one of his offices. offices. Uh, Anderson tries to say Messiah and Christ are the same. Well, that can't be true. When you see... Uh, Christ. Christ is anointed. When you see anointed, think appointed. Cyrus is called the anointed. He was appointed to tell Israel to go back to the land. Uh, the Bible says that uh, Lucifer was the anointed cherub that covereth. He was appointed to cover the throne 
and manifest the glory of God. Jesus was the Christ. He was appointed to do what? To do many things. He was appointed to be the Lamb of God. He was appointed to be the Messiah of Israel. He was appointed to sanctify people. So he was appointed to many things. He was the Christ. One of those was Israel's Messiah. We got in on everything that Christ promised when Israel rejected their Messiah and we trusted Christ. And the reason Anderson is making this big deal about the Messiah is because he took 20 seconds out of this. And that is almost two hours. It's two DVDs. It's called the post-trib pre-wrath rapture that he believes. And in that, he was devastated. He couldn't refute one scripture. His boss, the guy behind the pulling the strings, the puppet master, Wittenberger, neither one of them could change one thing or find one thing wrong with this. They couldn't refute one scripture. If you want to get that, that's at daystarpublishing.com. And that is the most thorough study you'll ever see on the post-tribulation pre-wrath rapture. And when they saw that, they said, we are devastated by the Bible. We cannot refute that. Let's pretend Gip is uh, off on his Bible. But the fact is this, if you're going to follow Stephen Anderson, then you're going to follow a man that believes God is done with Israel. I got news for you. I don't know what you think about the Messiah, but Israel, I always say this, I don't say Israel was God's chosen people. I say Israel still is God's chosen people. That really bothers Anderson. He wants to be preeminent. He's got a He's got an ego as big as all outdoors. And he has made this entire movie about, about marching to Zion. Now, if you're going to follow Anderson on what I believe about the Messiah, and here's what he did in this, this movie. He shows John Haggai. Don't know the guy. Uh, he says he doesn't believe Israel, Jesus was the Messiah at all. I don't know. I don't know what he believes because Anderson only showed about 10 seconds of what he said. Then right after that, he has me. And then he, now he's lying. And Anderson, you're a liar. Now he's lying and saying, I don't say that I said Jesus wasn't the Messiah at all. He even went to Wyoming and got a Pastor Muppet. And if you, if you watch Pastor Muppet, you can see Anderson's hands move every time this guy's lips move. And the funniest thing in the film is where this guy, you know, he takes a real bold stand. He says, the Bible is our final authority. It's not Sam Gipp or anybody else. And then he says, Jesus is my Messiah and doesn't give any scripture. He said the Bible's the authority and gave him, he gave you no biblical authority because he couldn't find one verse in the Bible that said a Messiah was sent to the Gentiles. We got him when Israel said no. Guys, I am not glad that Israel rejected their Messiah, but I'm thankful because we got in on something. But if you're going to follow Stephen Anderson, you're going to have to follow somebody that goes contrary to the Bible and to the Apostle Paul. You say, why? Here's what the Apostle Paul said about Israel. In Romans chapter 9, he said, verse 3, For I, I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul never said Israel was cut off. Israel was gone. He never said that. He said this in Romans chapter 10, verse 1, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Romans chapter 11, verse 1, I say then, hath God cast away his people? That's exactly what Anderson says. Anderson says God has cast away his people. And if you are one of those Christians who never read your Bible, you'll be fooled by a 12-year-old. But here's what the Apostle Paul said, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. The Bible says, now Paul says, Israel is an enemy for the gospel's sake. You go to Israel today and pass gospel tracts, they're not going to thank you. They're not going to say, we're glad you're here. Today, Israel is against the gospel like everyone else, but Israel is still God's chosen people. In Jeremiah chapter 23, look what God said. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries. This happened in 1948. Whither I have driven them, uh, and will bring them again to their folds, uh, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise up David, a righteous branch. This is now future. Uh, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. You know where that's going to happen? That's going to happen in Jerusalem. You know what country that's going to be? That's going to be Israel. That's in Jeremiah chapter 23. I don't even know if Stephen Anderson knows there's an Old Testament. Uh, in Jeremiah 31, he said this, After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write 
in their hearts, write it in their hearts, and will be their God and they shall be my people. That is a future reference to Israel. You know why? Because contrary to what Stephen Anderson says, Israel still is the people of God's heart. And this man despises that nation. Now, if you're going to follow him, if you're going to let him use his craftiness and show you this little thing and take 20 seconds of somebody's sermon because he can't handle the other hour long scripture and Wittenberger, the boss, he can't. I mean, uh, uh, Anderson has been Wittenberger's lackey for years. And so if you, if you're going to follow these guys, you're going to have to follow them against, against the Bible. Listen to what the Lord said in Jeremiah 31, verse 37. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. He said, if those things can be measured, then I'll cast off Israel. So when Stephen Anderson measures the heavens and when he finds the foundation of the earth, then he can say Israel's been cast off. He's nothing but a 12-year-old kid who throws his tantrums on air. Here's what Jeremiah chapter 33 says, verse 20. Thus saith the Lord, if ye can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should be uh, not be day nor night in their season. Now look at verse 25. Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of the, of the heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant. Guys, the Lord said, as long as there's day and night, Israel's going to be his chosen people. God said, not Stephen Anderson. Listen, Stephen Anderson doesn't stand against Sam Gipp. Stephen Anderson stands against the apostle Paul. He stands against the prophet Jeremiah. He stands against the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37, verse 21, And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they are gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. He did that in 1948. If Israel was written off, why did God fulfill that prophecy? Because they are still his chosen people. And someday, the Bible says in Romans chapter 11, that that right now this is the time of the Gentiles. It says that that Israel is the olive tree and that we were the olive branch, a wild olive branch that was grafted into that tree. And he said, if if God can, can graft an olive branch in that's wild, he certainly can take us back out and use that tree again. And right now, this is the time of the Gentiles. Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Don't read that. Not if you believe Stephen Anderson. Please don't read your Bible. Just listen to Anderson and go to the bathroom the way he tells you to. Because you don't want the Bible, the Bible will mess up Stephen Anderson. Here's what Ezekiel 38 verse 8 says. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that, uh, that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely, all of them. That last part, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. First part of that is 1948. They're not dwelling safely now. You know what that means? That's still future. That means God is still going to fulfill scripture in Israel. You know what scripture he's going to fulfill? The prophet Zechariah. Would somebody tell that Stephen Anderson, that there's a prophet Zechariah in the Old Testament? Does he even know there's an Old Testament? Would somebody tell, tell Wittenberger to show it to Anderson? Take him by the hand. Somebody get Pastor Muppet. And here's what it says. In Zechariah chapter 8, verse 22 and 23, yea, this is future. Many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts in those days, this is in future, it shall come to pass that 10 men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations. Those are the Gentiles. 10 people out of 10 different countries. What are they going to do? even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Now, Stephen Anderson will try to tell you that he is the fulfillment and that Israel, the, that, that he is now a real Jew and that the Jews in Israel uh, aren't there anymore. They're not the boss. Look, Stephen Anderson's 12 years old. He's got a little mental problem. I can't help him with that. 
He has, he has picked 20 seconds out of 44 years of preaching, and you think that's honest? You need to follow a 12-year-old if you're going to do that because he believes that, that Israel has been abandoned by God. I will say this. I don't believe that for a second. And if you will get that, maybe you don't want to do that because that's got Bible. Daystarpublishing.com. It's called the Post-Trib Pre-Wrath Rapture. That has devastated Stephen Anderson so bad that he couldn't address one scripture in it. If you want to follow 12-year-old, follow the 12-year-old. Or you can pick the book. If you don't know how, sir, men, if you don't know how to go to the bathroom, you'd better run to Phoenix, Arizona and go to Stephen Anderson. He'll explain it to you. But if you're a man and you're listening to me and you know how to go to the bathroom already, you probably have no need for Stephen Anderson. Which will it be? The 12-year-old puppet in the hands of Paul Wittenberger or the Bible? Have a nice day, Stevie.